Hello YouTube, Zmanzilla here, and I'm talking as quiet as possible so I don't wake up my family here. Uh, several people, um, I, I want to say, uh, well, there's a few people that uh, wanted to, we were curious about the way that I did the hazard spawn effects for my bosses, uh, because I was able to, like, get things like fire and smoke and things like that to follow the bosses around. So um, I wanted to go ahead and just do a quick tutorial to show everybody how I did that. And um, yeah, and so first of all, uh, before I do get to that, I wanted to kind of share the inspiration for the technique um, and explain how it works so that when you try this yourself, you'll understand sort of the process that went into it. So first of all, the inspiration has to do with the fact that I've seen a lot of people, uh, they'll use the, there's a standard trick you do with a repeater to get a, a hazard to follow someone. And I've gone ahead and I've created somebody called Noisy Imp here. Um, now, um, this is going to be a demonstration of one of the problems I've always had with it, which is that depending on the effect that you use, and usually you got to use things that sort of go off quickly, like explosions and things like that. So um, one of my main problems is with sort of the noise. So here's a demonstration. Here's the Noisy Imp. Um, and you'll notice that there's some obnoxious uh, bright flashes and that jingly jangly noise. Now, one of the nice things about the museum here is I can kill him in one hit. Imagine, though, trying to go through an entire boss battle with that jingly jangly noise and all that bright flash going on. And so, and of course, that can be a little grating on your player experience. So uh, instead, what we do now, we have, um, this is one of the creatures uh, that uses my technique. This is um, Gemini Balrog from... Um, one of the Gemini Balrogs from uh, uh, Devil City Ransom. And uh, so as you can see, he's got a fire effect on him. And what's more, if you notice when he flies through the air there, the, the fire actually arcs with him. Best of all, um, it's, I mean, you know, obviously the fire makes a noise, but it's, you know, it's fire noise. And you hear the fire noise all the time. It's not quite as um, grating as the, the constant jingle jangle. But yeah, just I mean, look how cool those fire flames are. It's just really awesome. So, um, and this technique can be applied to a number of effects. Um, so this is one of the smoked pork enemies from, again, from River City Ransom with some slight modifications. Um, but this is a specter that's generating a smoke effect. And um, so, you know, one of the problems with smoke effect, it doesn't spawn quite fast enough, so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't spawn quick enough to sort of follow them when it's running, but it still creates a pretty cool effect. When you combine it with other things, which you'll see you can do uh, when I show you how to do it, um, the you know you can get some really cool effects going. And of course, you can change the color of the smoke. You can change how much damage it does. So you can actually like make these trails do damage, so that anybody trying to like sort of duck behind can end up taking some damage from it. Things like that. There's a lot of possibilities with this technique. So. Um, so yeah, so you can see there's a lot of things you can do with that. And again, for more examples, you can check out uh, Devil City Ransom. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and uh, head back to the editor and so I can show you proper how this is done. Now, um, the reason this trick works is because I figured out that every single time it's spawning the uh, the hazard, what's happening is, uh, this is this is the original way, this is the way most people do it here. And so what's going on is your repeater is signaling a spawn object, all right? Now that is, that represents one single instance of the hazard. And every time you respawn using that same spawn hazard object, it's the same instance. So what's happening is, is every, uh, the, the repeater is currently set up to, was it uh, one, every one-tenth of a second? So every tenth of a second, it's taking that same hazard and just moving it to wherever the activator is, which is you know, right here. So wherever the activator is, it's respawning that one object. And so the hazards don't actually move. So I mean, once they get spawned, they're static. So um, and so what's happening is because it's only one spawn hazard object, it's only you know, creating that that static spawn hazard object in that one specific spot and keeping it there. And the reason it looks like it's moving is simply because it's respawning it every one tenth of a second. So, and that's why some of your anything that takes longer than a tenth of a second to to spawn up, like smoke or fire or things like that, won't work with this technique. Um, you know, I'm sure folks have figured out from their own experimentation. So the secret is you need multiple instances of the hazard. So what I've done, um, this is the Balrog here, and 
So he spawns. That starts up the repeater. It's the same repeater every one tenth of a second. It's spawning, but rather than the repeater triggering, triggering the, um, the hazard itself, it's hooked up to a sequencer. And the sequencer um, is set up so that um, you know it repeats the sequence. It only runs one output per signal. Um, and so every one tenth of a second, it's signaling one of these sequencers, which in turn is doing the same thing as before. It's spawning the hazard at the at the point of activator. But so what's happening is, is every time it triggers, it spawns that one, and then the next one tenth of a second, it spawns that one, then that one. And since these are all separate instances, it's spawning them one right after the other. So, um, and then when the sequencer comes back around, it ends and then it comes back up here. That's when it despawns this one and respawns a new one. So what ends up happening is you're actually animating ten instances. In the, in the case of this particular hazard, you're animating ten instances of the same hazard. So all I've done though is I've gone in is I made each hazard, you know, large fire uh, with slight damage and I made it green, you know, because of the Balrog. Um, and um, yeah, so the only thing is when you're using this technique, um, you got to make sure that um, when the um, when the demon is killed, and we use on encounter finished for that rather than on demon killed, because on demon killed can sometimes cause little glitches and bugs. So uh, I find that using on encounter finished rather than on demon killed, you use that to stop the repeater, and you also have to use it to remove all of the instances. So uh, what happens is the demon dies and then all of the the persistent instances go away. Now if you don't do that that's fine but what happens is any the, basically the last 10 instances that got spawned will just sort of hang there in the air and it'll look really weird. So and again th there's a you can pretty much do this with any hazard. You know, um, you can go through, you can do any hazard, you can set the, the custom filter to damage anyone you want or no one at all. Um, and of course you can change the colors. So um, so that's basically how the trick works. Now, right now, I'm showing this to you. I've only got, I've got these two custom builds, Balrog and Smokey, um, and I'm going to be uh, just sort of taking this one out. But um, this currently is uh, these two pre-built monsters, Balrog and Smokey, are in my custom Geo warehouse. Which, as you can see, there's not a whole lot of stuff in it right now. I just sort of kind of populate it when I have stuff. Like here's the dumpster from Devil City Ranch. There's a, a fully built desk from um, a board I'm working on with BAD Fluppy. Um, here is the kitchen setup from uh, from Pain Train, uh, you know, including the stove and the countertop that I built and stuff uh, and the sink. And so um, all of this and pretty much anything else I put in here is readily available to folks. I'm going to go ahead and um, that's going to get published uh, shortly. Uh, I don't have a, a map ID for that yet because it's not officially published. But uh, once that does get put up, uh, then yeah, basically anything you find in here, feel free to use. And it's going to include the code for, for these two guys, Balrog and Smokey. So um, yeah, uh, or again, you know, it's not too not too difficult to build yourself as well. So um, in any case, uh, that's that's how you do it. So if you have any questions about how to uh, how to make that work, or you have, you have any other questions about things you've seen in my maps, or just you know I, you want to figure out how to do a certain thing, uh, feel free to uh, comment uh, in this video and be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.